Hey everybody, Robert Rambles here and welcome to World of Warcraft Classic. Today we are checking out an Orc Shaman. We're going to check out the starting zones, roughly levels 1 through 12 at least. Let's check out the information we have here in the character creation screen about the Orc race. The Orc race originated on the planet of Draenor, a peaceful people with shamanistic beliefs. They were enslaved by the Burning Legion and forced into war with the humans of Azeroth. Although it took many years, the orcs finally escaped the demon's corruption and won their freedom. To this day, they fight for honor in an alien world that hates and reviles them. They can enrage, increasing damage but diminishing the ability to be healed. They are resistant to stun effects. Damage done by pets increased and skill with axes increased. Neither of these affects us on the shaman, unfortunately. And so that's interesting to keep in mind that they came from Draenor. They came through the Dark Portal in the first and second wars to fight the humans driven by the burning legion and actually controlled by the burning legion and then when that control was severed they were left here on azeroth so this is an alien world uh, to many of them and then let's check out information about the shaman shaman commune directly with the elements their combination of wisdom and resilience makes them ideal as tribal advisors and leaders in battle the shaman use totems and spells to manipulate the elements and provoke other fighters to untold heights of rage and might. Shaman exemplify the primal bond between the savage races and their environment. All right, so that is what we are going with. Long ago, the Orcish Horde was corrupted by the Burning Legion and lured to the world of Azeroth. For generations, the orcs made war upon the human kingdoms of Stormwind and Lordaeron. Though the Horde was ultimately defeated, a visionary young warchief named Thrall rose to lead his people in their darkest hour. Under Thrall's rule, the orcs freed themselves from the chains of demonic corruption and embraced their shamanistic heritage. After years of wandering, the orcs founded their own kingdom in the harsh wastelands of Durotar. Based in the warrior city of Orgrimmar, they stand ready to destroy all who would challenge their supremacy. As a proud defender of Durotar, it is your duty to crush your enemies, both seen and unseen. For the nefarious agents of the Burning Legion still wander the land. It's an interesting enough opening, and it paints us, uh, the orcs, in a very warlike manner at this state in their history, which makes sense. Alright, so let's go ahead and do a couple things right off the bat. We know we don't need auto attack. Let's go ahead and shrink this down. This is just some basic stuff I set up on every character. I don't use any add-ons in my playthroughs. Uh, but I do move some stuff around within the default UI and change some basic settings. And then I always turn auto loot on obviously. Action bars, let's get those on down there for buffs and whatnot. And let's take a look at what we have going on. So we have lightning bolts, cast a bolt of lightning at the target for 13 to 15 nature damage, pretty straightforward. That has a 1.5 second cast and a 30 yard range. And then we come with healing wave. Heals a friendly target for 34 to 44. So that's good, a heal and a damage spell. And we also have a mace. On the orc shaman to start, we're gonna be equipping leather armor. Eventually at level 40, we would be able to equip chain armor but at first we will be equipping leather and as far as the stats we want um it really depends Brawl. but let's get into it here and talk to Kaltunk here in the valley of trials your place in the world finally you are of age of age to battle in the name of the horde to conquer for the glory of the war chief yes Kaltunk looks you over you will do nicely no doubt you wish to find a great dragon or demon and strangle it with your bare hands. But perhaps it would be wise to start on something less dangerous. Keltunk laughs. Report to Gornak. He should be able to assign a task better suited to a young shaman. You will find Gornak in the den to the west. 
Ford. All right, well, all he wants us to do is go talk to another guy. And that's fine. We can kind of learn the lay of the land. We have some trainers over here. Our trainer, however, is somewhere else. Probably way back in this structure here. But let's talk to Gornak. Who so, looks so. remarkably similar to the last orc we talked to. And the reason we're playing a female orc is because I don't like the hunched posture that you're stuck with with the classic orcs. Now in Retail WoW, most recently, they allow you to choose between an upright posture or the hunched posture. But for some reason, the females have always been able to stand with their back straight and shoulders back and chest forward. Like, you know, I don't know why their vertebrae or spines would be different, but apparently they are. Uh, but it's probably mainly because the female model would not be attractive if they were hunched over. And so that's why we're playing a female work today. It's better character models, which is typically the case for female character models in video games. They are typically better than their male counterparts. Another one of Kelmec's recruits, hmm? A sorry state of affairs we find ourselves in if this is the best the Horde can produce. No matter. By the time we think you're ready to leave the valley, you'll be pr a proud warrior of the Horde. Okay. So, cutting teeth. The first order of business will be to put a little strength in your backbone. I could send you out to the barons to hunt Kodo, but, well, in all honesty, you're more useful to us alive than dead. I believe you would find a good match with the mottled boars you'll find to the north of here. Kill ten boars. Go. Pretty standard starting quest. Doesn't look like there's any other quests going on right now. So let's just go out and throw some lightning bolts at the boars. Like this one right here probably will work just fine. So that's classic lightning bolt, huh? Uh, it looks very different today and very much better. Um. So we can also melee. This is kind of the balancing act between the shaman is that it does a little bit of melee and it does a little bit of spell damage. And when we get our talents, we'll be able to pick and choose, but... You can see that we don't have an incredible amount of mana. And we are going to want to level up our weapons because we are going to be swinging at things occasionally what we really want to have on also is a shield so i'm hoping that uh we'll get a shield pretty quickly Such a little boar. Such a tiny little boar. Let's check out Healing Wave. Not that we really needed it. I think he resisted one of those. Well, there's level two and we still need two more boars Ooh, a small pouch that is good luck guys 
If you can find a extra bag, like in your first one or two quests, that's a huge advantage you have, because then your bags aren't going to get full. You're not going to be out in the wilds with full bags, unable to loot. We need to be able to loot and sell everything. It's incredibly important if you don't already know that. All right, there's 10 out of 10. Let's go ahead and head back. We could hearth, but we're so close, it's kind of pointless. And you could always make the argument for fighting more of these guys on the way. Usually what I'd say to do is just run around and fight stuff till you're level 2, just to get used to your abilities. And then do the first quest, that'll give you a little bit of an edge going in. It's kind of a do as I say, not as I do kind of thing. Wouldn't be very interesting if part of the first episode were me just grinding to level 2 on the nearby flora and fauna, plants and animals. Because as you'll see soon, we'll be interacting with some plants if I remember correctly. Zaretha Fargaze has a quest for us. I trust the Valley of Trials will teach you much, young shaman. I was sent to the valley to guide you, but I have discovered a growing taint here. A group that calls themselves the Burning Blade has a coven here in the Valley of Trials. They are skulking in a cave to the northeast, and their vile familiars have spilled from its mouth to cause havoc. As your first task against the Burning Blade, I bid you defeat these familiars. Slay many and, if you survive, return to me. Oh, we could use a staff, we could use a mace. I would take the mace hoping that we would get a shield May your blades never eventually, but you could see we're going to have some weapon diversity in what we can and cannot equip. Blood and thunder. Mm, not bad. But don't let it get to your head. You'll fight tougher than boars in your career. Nonetheless, you've proven yourself well, and your next trial will be against a considerably more dangerous opponent, so you'll need some extra protection. Let's take the leather gloves. That is what we want, is leather gear. We might as well put these shoes on because we apparently aren't wearing shoes. The rune inscribed parchment should take us to our trainer. Ah, while you were gone, a parchment came for you. Read it when you have time. If I'm not mistaken, it came from the shaman trainer, Shikrik. She would have words with you when you're ready. Strength. Ah, uh, we'll take a look at that. And then and Sting honor. of the Scorpid. Powerful warrior and awkward novice alike have fallen to the venomous Sting of the Scorpid. You will find large numbers of Scorpids northwest of here. Bring me ten of their tails as proof of your prowess in battle. The antidote for their sting is actually made from venom extracted from their stingers. We keep large quantities of antidote for scorpion venom on hand to heal young bloods just like you. But I'm sure you won't be needing any of that, will you? Uh, maybe not. Go forth to victory. And then where is our trainer? It, are they in fact back here or are they somewhere outside? We're already back here, so we might as well see what's here. The rogue trainer is in the back. Ah, uh, there's a weaponsmith back here, cloth and leather armor merchant. Shield crafter. Loktar. I'm tempted to get one of these, but I know we'll get something from a drop or from a quest. Warlock trainers and demon trainers. So that's what's back in the little cave here, the den. Let's head back out and find our trainer. But let's take a look at the rune inscribed parchment if we can. Of course, it's this strange text on a strange background that I have like a lot of fun trying to read. Loktar, sister, the elements beckon you closer and bid me to show you the path of the shaman. The spirits of our ancestors watch from beyond and swell with pride knowing you have joined our ranks. When you are ready, seek me out near the entrance to the den. It is there that I will be training others of our kind. Until then, may the wind be at your back. Here she is, right here. Greetings. So, you've arrived. I was beginning to wonder when you would show yourself. I sent the parchment some time ago. I wasn't sure if it had arrived. You said that. But enough chatter. You're here because you have chosen. Chosen to lead the spiritual lives of our people. You will be the conduit in which our ancestors communicate. You will have the power of the elements at your beck and call. Sundering your enemies will be child's play. Healing your allies as easy as breathing keep these things in mind as you face new challenges and come back to me 
as often as you'd like. I will remain here to teach you new spells and set you on the correct path when you are ready. Strength. Well, can we what learn can any I new spells? We can learn Rock Biter Weapon, Imbue the Shaman's Weapon, Increasing melee attack power by 33 and allowing melee attacks to cause additional threat when using that weapon. This is the strange thing about the shaman in classic is that they actually had talents and abilities that allowed them to kind of be a tank. Even though at max level they only wear chain armor. See we have the ability to block. We have the ability to dodge. And we just got Rockbiter Weapon, which increases threat. Um, what threat does is it makes sure that if I'm hitting a monster and you're hitting a monster, if I'm generating more threat, the monster's going to want to attack me instead of you. And that's important for tanks, because the monster should only be ever attacking the tank in a dungeon or raid. And so that puts the Shaman in a weird place, because yeah, we're getting more attack power, but if we were to use this in a group, we'd be pulling threat off the tank. It's fine solo. Uh, and that's what I mean by, even in the beginning, we're kind of a hybrid of melee and spellcasting. So it could be interesting. We need Scorpid Tails, and we need to fight some familiars. And we probably need to have a look around to make sure... Aha! I was going to say, I remember there being a, another quest to interact with some cactuses and pick apples or something. What do you need? Galgar. Galgar's, Galgar's Cactus Apple Surprise. Sure gets hot out here in the Valley of Trials. Galgar wipes his brow. If only I had some cactus apples, I could make my famous Cactus Apple Surprise. Nothing cools you off faster than a piece of that delicious treat. I'll tell you what. If you bring me ten cactus apples, I'll make a few portions of Cactus Apple Surprise to take with you on your adventures. If you're interested, you can find cactus apples growing near the cactus plants around here. Can we now? Do, do cactus apples grow on cactuses? Incredible. You learn something new every day. I don't like that it's called a surprise. And there's no further information than that, but it's okay. It'll probably be fine. Uh, so these are the cactus apples. Notice how they don't glow or shine in any way. You just kind of have to hover over them. And wait for the gear icon to show up. But we should probably start to head north, because north is where the vile familiars are going to be, and north is where the scorpions are going to be. And we could find the cactus apples basically anywhere. This guy is going to have a quest for us as soon as we hit level 3, I think. Which is probably something we want to work on doing sooner rather than later. Let's check out how much more damage we deal with rock... Well, I mean, we might not get to see that much. Just going to try out rock biter weapon, but... We are defeating things rather quickly at low levels. There we go. And this only stays up for like five minutes. So it's almost like a blessing of might. Keep in mind that only the Horde had sh the Shaman class in vanilla and only the Alliance had the Paladin class. So they're not exactly identical, but you can definitely see some things that cross over between the two, like some of these buffs. When we get totems, that will probably remind you of the Paladin's Aura. I certainly don't have to be fighting these. But, it's extra experience. And the spell is fast enough, this lightning bolt is fast enough that we don't suffer a lot of pushback from melee attacks if we time it right. We need to be collecting more of these. I've passed several without clicking on them. No animation to collect this. Very weird. Takes long enough though. I see a scorpion over there, but let's grab these cactus apples. And then we'll head that way.
very desolate landscape. Definitely gives you the sense of uh, isolation, especially with no other players really on right now. I'm not, I'm not really one of those, like, no changes to classic or no changes to vanilla people. I would love to see the updated visuals from retail just be put back into classic as a toggle option for those of us who would like to see the newer character models and the new spell animations. Uh, because what I like about classic more is just the systems that are actually controlling the game interactions. I would just love to see the updated visuals for my character and spells, though. Just because that's what I have to stare at while I'm engaging with said systems. And I don't think that the visuals affect uh, the core of the game. Except for my ocular enjoyment. Uh, here are the Vile Familiars. And Scorpids. So we can just start blasting away. These are level 3 and that one resisted. Just keep Rock Bite around. Interesting looking scorpion. Well, we don't have a very feminine voice. If that's us grunting and attacking, which I'm assuming that it is because I don't think the scorpion can grunt. I could be wrong about that. A grunting scorpion would be terrifying though. So unfortunately, that's our voice that we're hearing. So I'm not sure what the deal is with that. I have no idea. Uh, let's see. Well, let's chain. We can't equip chain yet. Yeah, the character voice is going to drive me crazy. I don't know why that bothers me so much. I wonder if there's anything I can do about that in the sound settings. Not really. I don't think that our grunting is dialogue. <laughs> so we might be stuck with that horrible male orc sounding grunting noise whenever we're melee attacking. Wonderful. Wonderful. I bet if we log into a female orc today in retail WoW and start up a character, that noise will not be the same. And I'm going to find that out as soon as I'm done recording this video. Because now I just have to know. Let's just listen, guys, listen. Well, there's level three. That distraction couldn't have come too soon. We have all the apples we need, we are just... Be way behind on scorpids and vile familiars. The only way to avoid the grunting is to kill it before it gets to us. And unfortunately, we're not really set up to do that. Probably need to go back towards the caves, actually. What's a little annoying is I know I'm going to have a quest to come back out here and wake up these peons, but it's okay. I think we have to come back out anyway. I also thought there might be a quest to pick up out here uh, somewhere, but that's pretty, pretty damn vague, I guess.
Alright, let's head back towards the familiars. A little bit of poison damage. Oh, you know what would be the true test of the voice of the female orc if we turn on error speech and hear what she sounds like when we can't cast. Let's back up out of range. I'm out of range. Let's hear it again. Maybe not. I need to get closer. See, that's not awful. Not gonna do it again. That's that's not awful, but the grunting is terrible. <laughs> the grunting is clearly not the same voice actor. I, I don't understand it, guys. Get a good look at these weird ass familiars. Oh, wrong guy. Yeah, he didn't even get that cast off. It's too bad about that. I don't really care for that voice either, honestly, but we don't have a lot of choices with uh, 2003 character creation systems. We don't exactly have like seven voices to choose from or anything like that, you know. As cool as that would be to be able to actually customize my character in a meaningful way, and that's more aimed at retail wow, obviously, you know, the, ga the game that exists in 2020. Uh, these guys, how many more do we need? So many, so many familiars. And we're just not getting a lot of scorpions down either. I feel like our kill rate is kind of slow, but maybe I'm just kind of slow. They're just not dropping. It's just not a 100% drop rate is the problem.
eventually we're gonna get another spell, I swear to god. <laughs> we're gonna get Earth Shock or Flame Shock, and that's gonna give us at least one more button to press. And won't that be a glorious day when that happens? What I remember from from Vanilla about the Shaman is that a friend and I played a combination of a Shaman and a Druid. I was a Shaman, he was a Druid. And that combination for like group questing, we were pretty much unstoppable. We could pull large groups and keep ourselves alive with our chain heal and then tranquility on the Druid. It was a lot of fun. You could do more interesting things when you're playing with, like, another player because you can do bigger pulls. You can pull more enemies and get yourselves into bigger trouble. You can jump right into elite quests, no problem at all. But the negative side effect of playing with somebody back during vanilla was that they were a person who was super familiar with the game already and that they weren't really interested in the lore, so I didn't get to read any of the quests for my first experiences with the game, you know. Only now, years and years and years later, 13 years later, am I going back and actually reading the original quests. It's been an interesting experience. And it reveals at once, like, an interesting depth of story in Lauren WoW, and at the same time it reveals a very, a very, well, almost a shallowness in the storytelling on a, on a surface level. Like, you can get a lot of lore from the quest and from some books and items, but when it comes to the story of your character, Especially in Classic, and I don't really know how much it's changed. It's just kind of a shallow experience from a role-playing perspective. There's not a lot of agency in the choices you get to make or anything you get to do, and you just do whatever people tell you as far as questing goes. And since you have to complete every quest, you don't even really get to pick and choose what you do and do not want to do. That's two resists on one guy and one encounter. It's level four, maybe that's why. Well, let's just fight one more and then we're gonna hit level uh, four ourselves. There we go. And with that, we can go ahead and hearth back. We could run back, but we'll just hearth. Put it on cooldown at least. And we'll turn these in. Drink and honor. Let's, for now, go ahead and grab the club, hoping that we'll either find or purchase a shield. Although the vile familiars were merely pets of the darker powers within the burning blade, your success against them foretells greater deeds ahead. Carry. Our inventory's full. Shit. Well, we can take care of that. Let's go turn these apples into Galgar. That'll start clearing out the inventory. Here's apples. I don't know how much reading that was going to matter, so. Sell all this junk that we don't need, which basically entails everything that we can sell at this point. Alright, now we have an empty inventory. Now we can turn everything in safely. Greetings. And then the follow-up quest, a burning blade medallion. Through my divinations, I see that an item of power hides deep within the burning blade coven, guarded by beast and black magic. It is called the burning blade medallion, and your next task is to find it and remove it from the coven. But be wary, for the medallion may be possessed by an agent of the Burning Blade. And if so, then the agent's power would be greater than, your fam than the familiars you have already encountered. Okay, so now we gotta go into the cave and find somebody who's gonna have a medallion for us. Well, Obviously they're gonna be more powerful than the small little familiars we've faced so far. Hello, and then Kanaga Earthcaller, a troll, has a quest for us. Call of Earth. The time is now, young shaman. You've grown strong and your spirit endures like the earth. Following the shaman's path, 
shows you have wisdom before even proving yourself. The element of earth will guide your destiny, becoming part of you if you are ready. But you must stand before the earth itself. If you are ready, then you will see things only shaman know of. Seek out the fell stalkers to the north and take from them two of their hooves. Return to me then and we shall speak more of your future. So although she's the trainer, this guy is now teaching us also about uh, shamanistic ways on the earth. Glory it's interesting. Oh, uh, here we go. Earth shock. Instantly shocks the target with concussive force, causing 17 to 19 nature damage. It also interrupts spell casting and prevents any spell in that school. This is incredibly powerful. It's not only an instant cast damage ability, but it's going to stop spell casting. Again, this causes a high amount of threat, which is a throwback to when Paladin could apparently Farewell. do some tanking. Let's put that right there at number two. That's going to make taking down enemies a lot easier for us. Lotar. The carapace of a scorpion isn't so thick that the strength of a determined warrior will be deterred. Strike strongly and without doubt. Yeah, we got them all, guy. There is an important lesson that you must take away from fighting scorpions. The smallest or largest of opponents can still send you to your doom. In fierce combat, any number of things can prove your downfall. I have no more to teach you. You have done well, and I will watch your progress with interest. Ah, uh, that's doubtful. But, that being said, give us the cloak. For the horde. Alright, we've got a new mace. It looks like something we might use in the kitchen. <laughs> and we have a cloak, which looks like, well, barely much of anything. A tiny little shawl, I guess. And then the quest that we have, one is for Shaman and one is for uh, the Burning Blade Medallion, but they're both going to be in the same place, which is going to be that cave to the north. So we're going to take a break here, and when we come back, we will investigate said cave. We will find the Fellstalker Hooves and the Burning Blade Medallion and bring them back. Let me know what you guys think of the Shaman and of the starting zone here for the Orcs. Interested to hear your thoughts or your own experiences with the game. As always... I really appreciate you guys being here. If you liked the video, give us a like. And if you want to see more WoW Classic content, think about subscribing and ringing that bell. The YouTube algorithm gods would love it. And I would greatly appreciate it. Until next time, take care and wish me luck.